Tequila lime chicken. Suck on that, Chipotle. Today we are packing our poultry with plentiful flavors using the power of booze. That's right, any bird can get it. Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, Toucan Sam, Big Bird. If you got wings, do not come in this kitchen right now because I will marinate you and I will eat you. First things first, we have to make our marinade, which does not take a lot of ingredients. You could really just do tequila and lime and be done with that, but you know, Four Choice Kitchen, gotta jazz it up. So I've got me some cilantro here, and I wanna take, well first off, I'm not gonna use a leaf that's bad. Uh, I'm gonna take what I'm gonna say feels like three tablespoons worth of cilantro, and I'm just gonna give it a rough chop. And then this is just gonna be my mixing, measuring device, so. I'm gonna throw that all in there. I guess for those of you who don't like the taste of cilantro, this is the least fun part. But hey, it adds some amazing flavor. Next up, what I wanna do is take four limes. Let me just roll these a little bit to try to get them a little more uh, filling of ripeness. I did kind of grab these in haste today, so if you find yourself with a lime that doesn't feel as ripe as you would like for it to be, just roll it on a hard surface. Of course, be careful because if you roll it too much, um, you will make it burst wide open. But this is a great way to kind of, you know, massage it and get it loosened up so that way you can really extract all the juices. No one likes hard lime. But before I cut and juice these, it's just gonna make life easier if I zest them first. So, literally taking the zest with our micro planer of lime. And you don't need a lot. I, I might just do two limes. And if you've never microplaned before, I like to do it this way because I can see where I'm going. Some people will go that way and you know, it's hard, you have to keep looking like where am I at. This way it just collects on the top. Well, you don't wanna get into the white of the uh, line at all. It gets kind of bitter and not good. So remember, zest your limes first, otherwise you're gonna be zesting squeeze limes and they are a little more difficult to work with. And I'm working with uh, just under two pounds of chicken today. I've got chicken thighs because I just like this, but this works on chicken breasts, chicken wings, um, any part of the chicken. And hey, you don't have to grill these. Uh, I'm gonna be grilling these today doing a, a two zone setup on my charcoal grill, but you could bake these. You could air fry them. Um, many, many ways of doing this. You could even sear it if you want to, just on the stove top. But because of the time of year we're in, I'm gonna grill. Now, as for the rest of the limes, let's just go ahead and get these ready to juice. Now, I don't know where I got this from. It might have been Target, but I really like using, when I'm like juicing a lot of things, I like using this type of uh, juicer because it has this little filter in it. So any pulp seeds, obviously if I'm doing like lemons and stuff like that where it's more seedy, um, gets filtered out and then all the juice collects down there and then I can just pour it out the spout without worrying about any of that getting there. It's really cool. I have different types of juicers, but for this application, I really like this one. And it also has measurements on there so I can find out whether I have half a cup or a whole cup. So it's a handy dandy one. So we're just juicing four limes. But as you can see, We've got our lime juice down here and all our pulp and stuff is just on top of this little filter here. So we've pretty much filtered it out. So we'll put the juice of our four limes in there. Next, we've got an orange. Any orange would do, but if you wanna get fancy, you can use a blood orange. It's not really gonna do too much for it. And using the same thing with the bigger attachment. We'll just Get that juice on out of there. And really, if you wanna add more to this, like once you see the recipe for the marinade, if you wanna add more uh, Mexican-esque flavors, by all means, go for it. So we'll get that orange juice in there. And then I wanna do about three to four tablespoons worth of just uh, oil. You can use canola, I'm using vegetable because I have this big thing here. So we're gonna say one, two, three, and four, it's like a fourth cup. I have got what I'm assuming is about two tablespoons worth of Worcestershire sauce. This is actually just all I have left in here. Um, of all the things that add umami, this is one of my favorite ones. You could use soy sauce. You could also do fish sauce if you want to. Equal parts, two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna pour that in here. I think for this particular dish, Worcestershire works better. 
Um, but there's nothing wrong with any of them. And yes, fish sauce is funky, but its smell does not reflect its taste. And again, we're just looking for that kind of umami flavor. Um, next, I wanna do some agave syrup. I'm gonna go with about, uh, let's say about two tablespoons worth. Add a little sweetness to it. The star of the show, some tequila. I've just got this big bottle of 1800 here and I, I wanna do about half a cup. A little bit more ain't hurt. Yeah, let's call that half a cup. And now we can add some seasonings in. I am gonna add what is gonna feel like a big giant pinch worth of just some sea salt. Also gonna do the exact same amount of pepper, just giant pinch. And then I also want to, so use any Mexican seasoning that you want to. You can even break it down to just using like chipotle powder, chili powder, and some other stuff. Um, I'm using the Cattleman's Grill eight second carne asada grill seasoning. Um, I, if you've been watching this channel, you know I pretty much use Cattleman's Grill everything all the time. Cause I just really like their, I just really like their, like their seasonings. And I like how coarse this one is. So I'm gonna put what's gonna feel like maybe two tablespoons worth of this. But again, any, any Mexican seasoning, it could be taco seasoning, anything works. I just like that one. And then lastly, I've got some minced garlic here. You can use fresh. Um, I'm using this honestly because I'm coming to the end of this jar and I just, I just wanna use it. That's it, it's just part of our marinade, so. I'm gonna do maybe two tablespoons worth because that's pretty much all that's left in this jar and I'm, I'm draining off the, uh, the juice and stuff. So yeah, we'll call that two tablespoons worth and hey, I feel good. I got to finally use all of this. It goes there. And I wanna say we've got everything we need in here for our marinade. So let's take our whisk and let's give everything a good mixing. Oh, it smells great. We might do a little bit more salt Granted, smell and taste don't always work, as I pointed out with the fish sauce, but it just feels like it could use some more salt. And as far as tequilas go, um, again, I'm just using a silver, a silver tequila 1800. Um, you could go fancy and use your Don Julio's, your Casamigas, or you could go cheap and use a whatever, Suaza, or, or uh, who, who, who else makes them? Uh, uh, Jose Cuervo, whatever you want. Um, and it doesn't have to be silver, it can be Reposado. Uh, I would not go Anejo, I would not go uh, Mezcal, because I just feel like you're introducing a whole nother flavor profile, but it could be good. I mean, the smokiness to it, so it might work. Try it out and let me know if it works for you. Okay, again, just under two pounds of chicken thighs here, and then I'm just gonna take a Ziploc bag here, and then we're just gonna pour it directly over our chicken. Seal this up part way, right before we get to the end. We'll squeeze out all the air as much as we can and then seal it all up. I like to make sure that I give this chicken a little massage because man, there's nothing worse than like throwing a bunch of chicken in marinade and then as you take it out, you find like somehow two pieces of chicken were laying like that and when you pick it up, like no marinade ever touched this part of the chicken. It's infuriating. So make sure that you just give it a quick little massage so there's no weird air pockets or anything going on. And then just for extra, you know, to save myself from making a mess later, I just take a little dish like this. I'll take my chicken, kind of roll it like that. And then let's put it in here. So that way, if any leaks occur, it'll be all be caught in here, but it should be pretty good. This is gonna stay in our marinade for at least two hours. I'm probably gonna go probably for like four or five. Um, overnight you could do as well, but a minimum of two hours. So into the fridge this goes, and then probably about, I'd say 30 or 45 minutes before I'm actually ready to, to cook these, I'm gonna take it out of the fridge and put it onto just my, my kitchen counter, whatever like that, because um, I just feel like allowing meats to kind of come up to temp a little bit more than just taking it straight cold out of the fridge and throwing the grill just helps it. You know, you're taking like really cold meat and throwing it onto a hot grill. I don't know. This is what I've always done, so I feel like it's gonna work in this scenario. So into the fridge this goes, and we'll see you all in about five hours. All right, it's just been a little over five hours. We're gonna take our chicken out of the marinade, and I am just putting it on 
this small tray here because we only have like four chicken thighs, but man, do they smell good. Now normally, when we make a marinade, we discard the marinade, which sucks because it's like you poured all these liquids together that you paid for and they just go to waste, but we are not going to do that today. Instead, what we are going to do is take our marinade, we're gonna pour it into a saucepan. Yep. We're gonna try to pour it into a saucepan. Somehow it ended up all there, but it's fine. We don't need a lot of this. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to take our marinade that we just had our chicken in, and we're gonna boil it. We're gonna boil it for at least five minutes. And the reason why is because we wanna kill any type of pathogen or bacteria or anything that may have gotten in here. So we're gonna boil it for five minutes and then I'm probably gonna lower it to a simmer for maybe like 10, just to keep it warm. Cause I also want it to kind of reduce and thicken a little bit. Um, the more it reduces, the more concentrated those flavors become. So I want that. And then lastly, right before I get ready to glaze the chicken, cause essentially what we're doing is we're creating a glaze. Right before we glaze the chicken, I'm gonna run it through a strainer into this container. And that way it'll get any of the, um, Really, you're trying to strain out like, like if a little chicken bits or anything like got into there, but it's gonna strain everything. And so it's just a smooth glaze and that's what we're gonna brush on our chicken later. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this back here. Ah, I'm so mad about that. Back here, I'm gonna get it nice and boiling, reduced, and then we're gonna go up to the rooftop and I'll see you all there. So I got Lou on the ones and twos and we just had a moment where he realized like none of our shit was rolling or ready to go. But um, I have got my charcoal grill set up for two zone cooking, I have it up to 400 degrees right now. I kind of want to get it to 450, but it's fine right now. So, uh, if Louis, you want to come in here real quick, I just want to show you what two zone cooking looks like. Got to burp the grill, bring it up. So two zone cooking, this side, exposed to the charcoal. I want to get that flame kiss. And then this side right here has a deflector plate because I want to finish cooking it on this side, indirect, away from the heat. So what I'm going to do is take our chicken thighs here there's the skin side. I don't know if you can see the skin side. And then there's the other side. I want to put the skin side down. Skin side down. And really what I'm looking for on this is just one, grill marks, but two, just to get a good, a good char on it. Skin side. And so I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna make sure this stays around 450 degrees. The reason for that is just because that's gonna get the skin nice and crispy. And if you don't have um, a grill like this, like, so we can go to this grill right here. This is not my grill. I actually have no idea whose grill this is. If I were cooking on this grill, I'd have all my coals on one side and my other side completely empty. Hot side here, cool side there. Works on any grill except for your pellet grills, which I have covered up here because my pellet grill does not have a direct flame option. And again, this is just because I want it to have a flame kiss. You could absolutely bake these, uh, these chicken thighs if you want to, it's up to you. But I'm doing it this way. So I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna take it off that skin side, move it over to the cool side while flipping it over and let it finish cooking. So we're gonna let that go for 10 minutes, I'll flip it and then we'll start getting ready to glaze it. All right. It has been a couple of minutes. Granted, I said 10 minutes, it could be five, could be three, depending on what your heat is. But let's burp the grill. And the first thing I wanna do is just check and see if we have our grill marks here, which we do, which is perfect. That's all the char I want on that side. So what I wanna do is on this back side, just take our glaze from earlier, just hit that back side. And yes, you're gonna get some flares. Totally fine. Let the alcohol cook off. Flame kiss is what we want. Hey, it's gonna cook off. Don't get scared. Don't get scared like I just did. Sorry, a little bit more, a little bit more. And now that we got that flame kiss on that side, hey, now that we got that flame kiss on that side, we're gonna take it and bring it over here to our cool side. I already glazed one side, and listen, we got a good char going on here. I want to bring this glaze over here, and we shouldn't have problems with flames on the indirect side because we have something protecting it from the flames. 
maybe five, 10 more minutes. We're just waiting for it to get to 185. Really 175 is where it's done, but 185, make sure everything's tenderized, make sure all the fat's broken down and all the flavors have had a chance to kind of come together, make sure the glazes had a chance to caramelize. So again, 10 more minutes and then we're gonna take it downstairs and we're done. That's the Kilo Lime Chicken. Without further ado, let's eat as my dog barks for attention. I'm gonna take the small one. I don't know. That's some good fucking chicken. It's really, really good. And again, I wanna emphasize what I said earlier today. Uh, the trend for tequila right now is like, like this heavy like vanilla taste. I don't think those are the flavor profiles that you want for your chicken because vanilla chicken does not sound good. But 1800 is great. Um, you could do Jose Cuervo, you could do Don Julio, anything that just isn't really like emphasizing that vanilla taste. But this is awesome, this is fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's Poor Choices Kitchen. Hey, we have a Patreon, it's down in the link. My mouth is watering so much because this shit is so damn good. So I will see y'all here next time. And obviously my poor choice was tequila. And yes, I've been drinking it as I've been cooking with it, uh, as you should too. So we'll see y'all next time. Peace.